same violence as another kind of violence. What's good, YouTube? It's a Black Gen Z mindset. Make sure you go ahead and like, comment, share, subscribe. Let's get into the video. Two-year-old FAMU grad student Michaela Bryant was killed as shots rang out at the Providence Point apartment complex on Stuckey Avenue. Madison Glazer in live at TPD tonight for us with the latest on this investigation. Madison. So, guys, um, we have this sister, Michaela Bryant, killed in a shooting. Tragic. Another black woman slain by these super gremlins. In a time where bomb threats have been made against HBCUs in this Black History Month, that was a big story. But this very small story, couldn't find it anywhere, had to look up and down. You know, just a black woman actually killed, right? Whereas the big story when it comes to HBCUs is that somebody put a bomb threat out on them and there was no bombs found. Now, when it comes to a bomb threat, obviously you take it seriously. But I would not be surprised if it was somebody within that school who didn't want to turn in a test or, you know, didn't want to do this or didn't want to do that. I think they're going to turn up and uh, find out what really happened in that situation. As for this sister, you know, she's going to get no coverage. And that's a shame. Police are not releasing any details at this time. Right now, they're only seeing that they're following up on interviews and finishing up on their prospected leads. We'll, we'll go from there and, and hopefully, you know, be able to find the suspects and, and find out who did this. A shooting of this apartment complex on Stuckey Avenue Wednesday afternoon, claiming the life of 22-year-old Michaela Bryant. This part was an eye-opening experience with somebody losing their life because uh, we've had um, several shootings around here lately. Prov <laughs> So she kept it a buck. She said these super gremlins are cutting a fool out here. They shooting the place up, but nobody has really died. Well, now we have the first killing in the area. So she says, I'm sure there's a whole bunch of different demon time activities going on in this area. But I mean, it, it's... It's almost getting to the point of unbearable there. I mean, I don't understand how sisters are just like change the laws now and keep these super gremlins because there's so many black women who are getting killed by super gremlins and they're still advocating for prison reform. They're still advocating for bail reform. They're, they still want to see criminals walk. <laughs> it, it's crazy. Evidence point resident Stephanie Evans says she heard it all play out while inside her apartment. Somebody was running up and down the steps and somebody hit our door. It was like they hit our door trying to get in. I don't know if somebody was trying to get help to get in or whatever, but I told him don't look out that door and don't go to the door because, and then that's when we heard the crashing and the loud noises and stuff. The victim's godfather and cousin, Joe Starnes, describes Michaela Bryant as smart, funny, and outgoing. Someone who made her family proud. Man. She was a Delta. Okay. HBCU grad. Um, unfortunately, probably still dealing with a pookie because you know how these strong, independent, successful women like to do. And it and it cost her, man. It really did. And it's unfortunate, but this is the reality, man. This is what's going on. At FAMU, she was active with the Delta Sigma Theta sorority and a member of the cheer team. 
Some of Bryant's sorority sisters have created a GoFundMe page to help the family with funeral arrangements, and you can find that information on our website. For Eyewitness TV News, I'm Madison Glacier. Yeah, Madison, that page already raising thousands of dollars and outpouring of support. Uh, you just uh, feel for the family right now. VAMU. Hundreds gathered yesterday at VAMU's Charles Winterwood Theater for a vigil to pay tribute to their fallen rattler, Michaela Bryant. The vigil gave her friends and family one last chance to say their goodbyes. Our Brandon Spencer has the story. A theater almost at capacity to remember 22-year-old Michaela Bryant. And you see all these brothers and sisters in here. And this happens a lot, okay? I remember when I had a friend who passed due to a super gremlin trying to rob him. And you knew it was a thing, but it was something that you really didn't articulate. You really didn't speak about it like that because you didn't want to seem like a coon. You didn't want to seem like an Uncle Tom. But if speaking up about this stuff makes you a coon if speaking about about this stuff makes you an uncle tom then i guess nobody's gonna get right because <laughs> when is it gonna end okay and you really only have to worry about your safety around these super gremlins and we know this but we continue to push this lie push this agenda that we're the ones being hunted. No, we're the hunters. The super grimmers, that is. Her close friends and sorority sisters describing what she was like. To know MK, even for a day, an hour, a minute, was to have love for a lifetime. She was just a beacon of joy, of light, of happiness, a ray of sunshine, a breath of fresh air. She was spontaneous, she was energetic, she was a leader, and everything she did, she did it with so much passion and integrity. From faculty, friends, and members of the multiple organizations, and the way they speak of her so highly, man, it, it, it gives credence to her character. My thing is, when it comes to sisters, I don't know how this went down. If she was involved in a, with a pookie or not, I don't know. It could have just been straight random. But I'm sure we'll, we're, we're going to get the full story very soon. Brian was a part of all came together to give their condolences as they say she touched their lives in such positive ways. Every person that she came across whether it be you know uh, like in passing or whether it be like an intimate setting they understood like she was somebody to respect she was somebody to love and she was somebody that you could always count on. Dozens showing support to some of the Bryant family in attendance with President Larry Robinson echoing the sentiment of loss. Um, and I consider all of these students you know you know, part of the family. I see them as my own. So this hurt me as well, but I'm pretty sure there was a deeper sense of loss uh, for her, her family and friends. For a young woman so loved and inspiring to so many, saying she will be missed is an understatement. Be a tragedy in itself to not remember her life because she made such an impact while she was here not just in the classroom, not just on the football field or the basketball court, not just on the set, not just in her hometown of Chicago. She made an impact everywhere she stepped foot. Wow, man. So Shorty comes from Chicago, <clears throat> a place ridden with super gremlins shooting the place up. Super gremlins on demon time, jacking cars, doing all types of nonsense. Comes to FAMU, graduates out here in Tallahassee, Florida, and still can't get away from the super gremlin on demon time. Reporting in Tallahassee, Brandon Spencer, WCTV, Eyewitness News. According to her friends and family, a funeral for Bryant will be held in Chicago. All right, guys, so finally we have two super gremlins arrested for the slaying of Michaela Bryant. So let's get into it. 26-year-old um, Khalil Ogilvy, 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 faces first-degree murder charges in the shooting death of FAMU grad student. So 
Two have been charged in the tragic slaying of FAMU alumna Michaela Bryant. Get the full story from Christopher Can at the Tallahassee, Tallahassee Democrat below. A second person connected to the murder of Michaela M.K. Bryant was arrested Monday, according to the Tallahassee Police Department. Khalil Ogilvy, 26, faces a first-degree uh, felony murder charge and remains in the Leon County Detention Facility without bail after police say a drug deal ended in gunfire. Wow. Wow. So maybe Michaela was coming to cop and she didn't understand the type of super gremlins that she was dealing with. Because, yeah, some of these super gremlins will say, yeah, I'm the plug. I'm the plug. When you pull up the cop, they just robbing you for the money that you brought. So that's really a thing. According to investigators, Ogilvy agreed to meet Precious Charleston or Charlton 23 at the Providence Point apartment complex to exchange six hundred and fifty dollars for a quarter pound of marijuana. Dang. And I don't know how she got linked up with this guy. Somebody must have put her on to him. But she copping a QP. Okay. From this super gremlin. Buddy already looking rough. So it looks like Michaela Bryant was, you know... She was the plug. She was doing her own thing, moving her little, you know, whatnot. I'm not mad at it, but you got to, got to verify the people that you're dealing with. Um, Charleston picked Brian up from the Governor Square Mall before they got the car washed. Ate, an ice cream, ate at an ice cream store and headed over to the apartment complex to make the exchange. When the pair arrived, two men, one of whom police say was Ogilvy, walked over to the woman who each had handguns in their laps, according to court records. <clears throat> That's when police say Ogilvy approached Bryant and pulled out a handgun in attempt to rob them. According to an arrest affidavit that added Bryant grappled with Ogilvy over the handgun and the gun went off. Wow. So, I mean, this young lady was very brave because... Dude pointed a gun in her face and, and she's fighting with him. Um, and that just goes to show, man, ladies, if you're in the if you're doing illegal activities, you better have you a man with you because you're going to take that L every time. Charlton drove Bryant to Tallahassee Memorial Healthcare where she died during surgery and arrest affidavit said um, she was a 22-year-old Florida A&M University graduate student who was remembered by her family and friends as a stellar student and inspirational leader of the university's cheerleading team. Charlton, a current FAMU student, was arrested Saturday and charged with third-degree felony murder and possession of narcotics with intent to sell. So she's getting charged for the third-degree third murder because she was involved in the transaction. Oh, man. This is crazy. This is crazy. So, I don't know if they set set her up. If that's what they're trying to say. She identified Ogilvy in a police lineup, but could not identify the other man who said looked to be younger, possibly 18 to 20, according to an arrest affidavit. On Monday evening, TPD spokesperson Alicia Turner said, no other suspects in the case have been identified. Okay, so Ogilvy was with another dude when he um, shot Michaela. Um, man. This is crazy. Um, look, man, sisters, y'all are y'all can never be the plug. I'm sorry, you're not him. Like you, <laughs> you will never be the plug. Okay. It's too dangerous. You're not ready for that smoke. It's even dangerous for guys, but let alone you being a female. Oh, man. Oh, man. Okay, so I think Charleston Precious, the Charlton Precious girl, she set her up. 
yeah this is what it looks like because they agreed to meet at the apartment complex they got ice cream first and then she set her up to get robbed damn that's tough Whew. that's the game that's the game